So I've managed to get my hands on the new ChatGPT desktop app. And the way that you get it and the way that you, you know whether you're able to get it even is just log into your ChatGPT. I believe you've got to be a ChatGPT Plus user to get it anyway. And then it literally just had a message come up at the very bottom where you type in your prompts. You know, uh, the, the Mac download, the Mac app desktop was available for download. Click it, done. And then just do your usual, drag it across to your file and install it. And that's it. And here it is. So it's obviously, you know, just in its own clean window um, versus being in the browser window. And I actually just asked the uh, ChatGPT exactly what is the benefit here. So let me just zoom in if I can. Oh, I can't zoom in on this. So I'm just going to, um, I'll you'll zoom in afterwards with the editing. Um, basically, the new Mac version uh, is giving you a more seamless integration, uh, accessibility, so you don't need the web browser. Now, offline access, now that's interesting. It didn't really tell us much about what it can do offline, but I suspect that they're, um, they're going to be given us some ability uh, to do things offline. And then notifications, so obviously it can tell you anything that's important that's going on. And then a user-friendly interface. And it really is super similar to the uh, web version. So I'm not going to say at this point that you're really missing out on anything by not having it if you don't. There's your little side panel. You've got a search up there so you can search through your chats. Then down the bottom left, you've got your usual kind of settings and everything just there. You can choose the shortcut that you might want for like the launcher. So uh, if you want to use, I think it's space and option at the moment, the option key. Yep. And then that will just launch it straight away. And then you can keep it on top as well um, just by uh, selecting that little radio button there. Haptic feedback. I don't know, you know, really why you would have that. Obviously, on on your own uh, on your desktop computer, but there you go. And then a data controls, uh, archive chat, and then the usual stuff like in terms of customizing it specifically for your use. So that is like the settings and everything. Then you can uh, upload files, upload photos. You can also take a screenshot and take a photo. So those are the other two things that it allows you to do. And if I if I perhaps bring it up here like this, there you go. You can see them all just there, entire screen. Um, upload photo, upload file. You've got your microphone input there. And then also the voice uh, to and from kind of us to ChatGPT using the headphones here. And there it is, there's the headphones right now. Hi ChatGPT. Um, we were just doing a video, actually. In fact, we're in the middle of a YouTube video, ChatGPT. Would you like to contribute anything? We're explaining how the Mac uh, desktop app ChatGPT works. That's awesome. I'd be happy to contribute. You could highlight how the Mac desktop app makes using ChatGPT more convenient. Mention the seamless integration with Mac OS, the ability to access the app directly from the desktop, and the notifications feature. This could emphasize how it's designed to improve user experience and productivity. Okay then, thanks very much. That'll be it for now. By the way, if you're into ChatGPT and you're interested, then join my group. It's completely free and there's now 10,000 plus members and we all just geek out on everything to do with AI languages, image generators, you know, you name it. If it's to do with AI, we talk about it in here. There's a link underneath this video. We'd love to have you come and join and uh, interact with all these wonderful people from around the world about artificial intelligence. You're welcome. There we go. So well, let's just take her out of the equation for a minute. Um, so that was enabling voice chat just there. You literally just press the headphones and then you can start talking to it. It isn't yet like um, like it is in the, the demonstrations from OpenAI where you can just talk freely back and forward super fast. It's still a little bit of a delay in between. But it's, it isn't actually typing out the what you say and then reading back what you say in the uh, or what its response is in chat anymore. So it's not typing out everything. The typing is gone if you now use that. But it's definitely not quite as quick as, you know, we've seen in the demos. So whether that's the final version and everything, I don't know. 
but you can also choose your models up here like this and then you can also access the uh the gpt store just there and then um your temporary chat just at the bottom so yeah it's it's pretty smooth pretty easy to use and so far so good so i look forward to you know seeing how people you know start to use this and really build it into their daily workflow the other thing you can do as well is if you want to you can literally kind of drag files over uh, like this and um, you know obviously talk about things to do with that file or image so I'll just ask this a quick question um, do you recognize the person in this photo I've got a feeling it won't do it because yeah there you go hang on I don't have the capability to recognize individuals and in images. That's right. It doesn't like to do that. I expect that's something to do with privacy rules and so on. So, um, but it, yeah, anything you drag into this window, you can interact with as normal. And I think it's going to be a really useful addition to anyone who's got a Mac. And I'm really pleased that it's come out on the Mac first as well, because usually it's us who have to wait for Windows people. All right, that's it for this very quick video. I hope you liked it, and I hope you managed to get your hands on the uh, ChatGPT Mac desktop app very soon. And there's another video coming in a second. Thanks for watching.